Let's come to the pathological features of medium vessel vasculitis, which affects the medium sized vessels supplying the organs. The first one of these is polyarthritis nodosa, in which the characteristic gross feature is string zone appearance of vessel wall. The strings are actually the fibrotic part of vessel wall and beads are nodules on the vessel wall. So you see alternating areas of nodule, fibrosis, nodule, fibrosis on vessel wall. Secondly, the important thing is the order of involvement of vessels in polyarthritis nodosa. The most common artery involved is renal artery. The narrowing of renal artery causes renal artery stenosis and this renal artery stenosis will result in secondary hypertension. So rapidly accelerating hypertension is the main clinical feature of polyarthritis nodosa. Second artery that is commonly involved in polyarthritis nodosa is coronary artery. The narrowing of coronary artery will cause ischemia to heart or ischemic heart disease and it can even result in myocardial infarction. The third important involvement in is hepatic arteries and mesenteric arteries which supply the intestines. So the peristalsis of intestines will induce pain in abdomen. So the three common involved arteries are renal arteries, coronary arteries and third is hepatic and mesenteric arteries. Now to memorize this order of involvement of arteries, I have made a small poem. This poem is, in pan there is a hypertensive young man who suffers from ischemic heart disease and cannot pass his tools with ease. In pan there is a hypertensive young man who suffers from ischemic heart disease and cannot pass his tools with ease. So firstly, pan means polyarthritis nodosa. The second line is, there is hypertensive young man, which shows that renal arteries are the first to be involved in polyarthritis nodosa, which causes secondary hypertension in young adults. Then the third line is, who suffers from ischemic heart disease. This means that second commonly involved arteries are coronary arteries. And the last line is, cannot pass his tools with ease, which means that, Im which means that involvement of hepatic and mesenteric arteries supplying gut which, produce, which will produce symptoms of pain during peristalsis of gut. Now I have already taught you that fibrotic vessels in cases of vasculitis tend to develop aneurysmal dilatations. So here you can see aneurysms in arteries. And I also told you that vessels affected by vasculitis gradually become narrower and produce ischemia. So this ischemia can cause infarcts or ulcerations in the target organs. So overall on gross features of polyarthritis nodosa, you see string zone bead appearance, you see aneurysmal dilatation of vessels, and you see infarcts or ulcerations in the affected organs. Now for microscopic features, the mnemonic to remember is FIT, FIT, where F stands for fibrinoid necrosis of vessel wall. So on microscopy, you see fibrinoid deposits with necrotic cells. I stands for inflammatory cells, which include both acute and chronic inflammatory cells. And these inflammatory cells may be present all over the vessel wall. And at last, T stands for thrombosis, which shows the presence of thrombus in the vessel wall. So overall, on microscopic picture of polyarthritis nodosa, you will see fibrinoid necrosis, inflammatory cells, and thrombosis of lumen. And along with these changes, the late changes are same as in all cases of vasculitis, that are intimal thickening and fibrosis. Now, the second type of medium vessel vasculitis is Kawasaki's disease, which is almost similar to polyarthritis nodosa. The only difference is the site of affected vessels. We studied that in polyarthritis nodosa, most commonly involved arteries are renal arteries followed by coronary arteries. But in Kawasaki disease, renal arteries are not affected and the most affected arteries are coronary arteries. And as Kawasaki's disease usually affects children, so it presents with young children with myocardial infarction, which is obviously a very surprising feature. The second most commonly involved arteries in Kawasaki's disease are mucocutaneous arteries which supply the mucous membranes and skin. Other than these changes, all the features are similar to polyarthritis nodosa which include aneurysms in the vessel wall and infarcts or ulcerations in the affected organ. So the only difference you need to understand is that Kawasaki's disease affects coronary arteries and mucocutaneous arteries and Kawasaki's disease usually occurs in children. Similarly on microscopy, Kawasaki's disease manifests as fibrinoid necrosis, inflammatory cells, and thrombus in the lumen. And in late stage, Kawasaki's disease will cause intimal thickening and fibrosis of the affected vessels. This concludes our discussion about polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki's disease, both of which are medium-sized vessel vasculitis.